Liz Cheney's comparison of herself to Abe Lincoln was shot down by the nation's John Nichols, who blasted Cheney for being pro-abortion, anti-labor, lying about former President Obama and Vice President Harris, attacking progressives Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib, defending the Iraq War, big oil, and backing Trump in 2016 and 2020, and backing former President Trump's agenda 93% of the time, saying that it is absurd to imagine herself as Lincoln-esque. And yesterday we discussed a new political action committee that Cheney was cooking up following her primary loss in Wyoming. Business Insider confirmed that Cheney did in fact convert her House Campaign Finance Committee to a leadership PAC named The Great Task, according to a Federal Election Commission filing. A Cheney spokeswoman told Politico Wednesday that Cheney, quote, will be launching an organization to educate the American people about the ongoing threat to our republic and to mobilize a unified effort to oppose any Donald Trump campaign for president. Trump took to Truth Social to blast the media that, quote, continues to push crazy Liz Cheney and the fact that, despite losing her race to a far superior candidate by an unprecedented 40 points, she has a bright future. Really? I don't think so, but perhaps that's why we call it fake news. Mm. I, I heard that in... Um, uh, that's what's why they call it the blues. What? <laughs> like Elton John, that's why they call oh, it fake news. <laughs> too too young, too young for that deep cut. But look, okay. So <laughs> I, I hate to I hate to be agreeing with with Donald Trump, but it is a little bleak to think that she has yeah. a political. Oh, watch uh, it! You're gonna have people here. coming after you on Twitter again. <laughs> I know that is Closet, that is my uh, life. Concern. Let me assure everyone who's been yelling at Brianna <laughs> lately that she is not secretly part of the right. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know. The, that the people here in this context will think that's hilarious that anyone would think that of me. But look, her political instincts here, the great task, yeah. the great task, that's what really inspires me, the idea that I have a really, really big chore ahead of me. But it seems like following her political career is going to be the chore that at least those of us in the media field are going to be tasked with for the next year year or two. Yeah, look, I've, I've said this uh, before, and it, it's, it's how I feel about the issue. I also don't agree with um, most of those things. Um, you read off Liz Cheney does not represent a version of the Republican Party that I have much affection for. I oppose neoconservatism, hawkishness, um, honestly, some of the social conservatism she, she represented at the time, her family represented, yeah. um, despite, uh, despite her father being for same-sex marriage and Liz Cheney initially being for it. Her sister is a lesbian in a lesbian relationship, a lesbian marriage, and then she flip-flopped on that to win voters, and it was very like embarrassing, humiliating. So look, I'm not the biggest Liz Cheney fan. At the same time, it is clear she is being thrown out of the party, not for any of her political stances mm. whatsoever, solely because she crossed Trump and made it her entire personality. Well, is that, let's, let's interrogate that just a little bit, because you did just list something that is really core to what that kind of populist right aspect of the party that's surging right now cares about, which is this anti-intervention, war is bad, you know, use our resources to help people here at home, America first mentality. Mm -hmm. And she is someone who has cheer-led all of our uh, frolics and detours abroad. And torture, defended torture. Defended torture, who, and, and to your point about hypocrisy, you know, someone pointed out that, you know, her father, presided over the effective stealing of an election in, 20, in the year 2000 in a lot of people's uh, Yeah, it was a little eyes. different. It was different. But that people don't see her as being the mm -hmm. kind of honest actor that whatever you think about Trump and that wing of the party, people perceive them as being blunt, saying what they really feel. There's no filter on these truth uh, social posts. And do you think that actually that's part of it? That's part of what's going on with Liz Cheney is that she's not just being rejected for uh, not supporting Trump. But also because she doesn't even capture any of the other parts of the zeitgeist. No, I think she's being rejected. I wish it were the case that she was being rejected for her bad ideas, but that's not the case. Mm. She could have, if she had not said anything critical or, or done what everyone else did in the wake of January 6th, condemnation and then moves on and then goes back to just being fine with Trump, like everyone else in the Republican Party, virtually everyone else, um, she would and not voted for impeachment, she would have been fine. It doesn't. Her differences didn't matter. She won. Those differences were true. I mean, the populist right was as... Uh, you know, surging as much as it is now for the entirety of Trump's presidency when she mm -hmm. voted with him 93% mm -hmm. of the time and won by whatever, 70% or whatever, her last primary if she even faced was she was mm -hmm. reelected by, she had no opposition. Uh, it, so it's really, it's really just about Trump. And look, like I said in our, in our top of the show, I think that's an unhealthy tendency in the Republican Party if we're trying to grow the party and win these voters that the Republican Party needs to win elections. Just the Trump contingent, the Trump coalition, 
is not enough. And the, the, the new right, the Trump base, the Republican Party has to understand that if you get every, everybody who votes Republican together, it doesn't add up to enough people. Even, even given the advantages, frankly, the, the electoral college system gives to Republicans. It's not enough people. So you have to win other people and this kind of just, just unpersoning of people who are critical of Trump is not useful at the end of the day. If it's just gonna be Liz Cheney, that's fine because again, her views, I agree, are very bad and are not the direction the party should move. But I don't think that's actually what it was about. Yeah, I mean, fair enough. But even in your own example, you pointed out that other people had been critical of Trump mm -hmm. closer to 1-6, and they just said their criticisms and moved on, said, oh, no, Biden really did win the election and moved on. And that is a little bit more than just a willingness or unwillingness to acknowledge that Biden won the election duly. It is the uh, way that you voted on 1-6, voted mm -hmm. for impeachment, and also her making that her whole shtick for the last mm -hmm. 18 months or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it was interesting. It's interesting. Well, Tucker Carlson has weighed in as well, saying this on Fox News yesterday. I must say, I feel sorry for it. It turns out American voters are harder to deal with than Iraqi civilians. You can't just drone them to death. <laughs> you have to obey them. Oh, it's so great. <laughs> yeah, this is Liz Cheney Day in my house. Victor Davis Hanson, great to see you. I mean, look, that's a fair point. I, her policies, are, uh, to the extent she represents the neoconservative wing of the Republican Party and their disastrous foreign policy adventurism, and I think it's fair to represent her that way. She's yeah. part of a political dynasty who is very responsible for those policies. Those policies were very bad. I was critical of them at the time, critical of them now. So are you. So are, you know, the, the kind of... This is actually an area of, of overlap. It's, it's the reason we talk about foreign policy a lot on the show is progressives, yeah. libertarians, and the new right all kind of opposing what was what was a, the main thrust of the Republican Party for the aughts, but also the Democratic Party as well. And it was a bipartisan, yep. neoconservative regime under people like George Bush and Hillary Clinton, et cetera. And it, one that even, you know, it w was, was part of then Barack Obama and Donald Trump, even though they had spoke against both of them when they were running for president, right. the need to break with that foreign policy consensus. They didn't. They got sucked back into it. So... So I agree, and it is, again, it's good to the extent that voters are rising up to say no more of this policy, and I think they are. The voters never supported these policies the way right. the establishment thought they did. So that is a, that's a good, healthy direction policy-wise for us to move, but the, the Trump loyal personality part of it, I don't like it, and I actually think it's a political loser. Well, there's only one place for Liz Cheney to go now which is the Democratic Party. And I will say to the extent that people are concerned about this realignment and you know the move toward fascism or however it's described in the most uh, extreme terms on MSNBC, the number one thing you could do to uh, encourage that the desire of independent voters who are disaffected and trying to figure out what to do because they're frustrated with two corporate parties, the number one way that Democrats can give a big win to the populist right is to hire Liz Cheney and back her <laughs> as a Democratic candidate for office one day. Either of those things. If I see her on MSNBC, if I see her You're gonna on see her on MSNBC. Ballot, You're going to see her there. That's, that's Democrats signing their own death warrant. Yeah, I mean, they, but the temptation, well, and Democrats are different. The, the Democratic friendly media just has, does not have, I mean, this is true of both uh, uh, liberal media and conservative media is that their incentives are not always in the best interests of their political coalitions, right? It, it, yes. it is in MSNBC's best interest, perhaps, to put Liz Cheney on because mm. they're resistance-loving, well, I don't know, they're resistance-loving viewers. Look at Tucker. His is the most kind of popular yeah. new show on television, yeah. and he's sitting there saying what people want to hear and what people believe. I can't imagine who on CNN or MSNBC would make that kind of a statement, would bring that kind of energy. Oh, maybe, no one, no one. Maybe Mehdi Hassan. Yeah. But I can't think of anything But maybe they're thinking all that. the people who feel that way are already watching Fox. We've they've and that's lost why. them to Fox. So you need more of the you need more pro Liz Cheney pro Liz Cheney people are more likely to be watching MSNBC MSNBC and CNN at this yeah, point. Yeah, the the winnowing world of pro Liz Cheney people. The, yeah, the, like the all 15 six of them. Pro Liz Cheney, they're literally already panelists at MSNBC. Then give her a CNN <laughs> Plus show, maybe right. maybe that's uh, maybe right. that's where her her future lies. All right, we'll have more rising right after this.